Team Trump does not want to just beat him. Team Trump wants to humiliate him maybe more than they've ever wanted to humiliate anybody on a national stage. And that is what is driving a lot of this. So it's not just that Trump wants to beat him. Trump wants to basically destroy his life. And I am okay with that. <laughs> like, this is one of the things where I actually want to say like, go Trump, do this. Make sure that America never has to endure Ron DeSantis as president of the United States. I don't see really voting as a right, if I'm being totally honest. Like, it's not just women. There's a lot of people that really shouldn't be voting anymore. Such as? Um, you know, maybe people that don't own property, uh, young people, people that work like retail jobs. But I'm talking about people on welfare and things like that, that have been on the system and have been, you know, exploiting the system for many, many, many years. They should not be allowed to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. Young people, voters of color, poor people, disabled voters, they don't benefit from that kind of governance. So they're not going to vote Republican. And if you don't support Republicans, they don't want you voting. He likes causing chaos. That's what a friend of one of the rock-throwing suspects allegedly had to say about them. That's according to newly released arrest documents for these three 18-year-olds now facing murder charges. The papers detail the heartbreaking moments when 20-year-old Alexa Bartel was killed. She was reportedly on the phone with a friend who eventually tracked Bartel's phone to the crash site after the line suddenly went quiet. Investigators say she had a serious head injury likely caused by an object coming through the window and hitting her. According to the affidavit, the three suspects were at this Walmart earlier collecting rocks. A friend who was there reportedly asked to go home because he didn't want to be involved in anything they were up to. I remember some, some reading or, or hearing of someone who'd gone to visit their parents who, who'd recently subscribed to Fox News or recently started watching Fox News. And after about six months, they buried the family jewels and their guns in the back garden because they'd learned from Fox News that Barack Obama was going to come to their house personally and take them away, which was probably an embellishment or an exaggeration, but it remains a fascinating um, question. So how significant, how virulent, how bad has Tucker Carlson been for America? No, um, but um, I've seen what had happened with my sister-in-law's family in California. Um, he, um, they, during the pandemic, um, she didn't see her family for two years right. because they had gone down the rabbit hole of Fox News. They used to be mainstream Republicans, and then they went... So that would be Ronald Reagan and George Bush? Yes. yes. Oh, absolutely. You know, the Ronald Reagan and George Bush. But this phenomena of Fox News coupled with Trump, mm. coupled with, um, you know, it just literally, um, she didn't see her family for two years because... It, because of the, you know, the differences, the political differences. I mean, I, I remember Fox News was here until 2017. Yes, that's um, right. And then um, I watched them during the Iraq War. Um, their take on what was happening was totally different than the BBC. Sure. It's always been right wing, but it was never, it was more like Rush Limbaugh right wing. Okay. Now it's gone into a whole new thing. And well, I you need to explain that. Because, I mean, for my money, Rush Limbaugh was pretty, pretty appalling. Anyway, was pretty so appalling, what was the new I, gear that they found with people like uh, Tucker Carlson? I think with Sean Hannity as well. Well, I, I think it's just basically, it was just the conquer and divide, divide and conquer. They literally thought, and, it, it, and I think all of our news outlets are to a certain extent, it is more, it's, it's populism. And they saw how it worked around the world and okay. they thought it, and then I think they took that tack and people were ready for something new. And this is where, I mean, obviously I'm on the other side of the spectrum. I watch MSNBC and CNN, sure. but even CNN has come much more to the right. And I can see Fox News is going to have to go a little bit more central because they're going to lose, their, their viewers will be going to Newsmax and places which like is, that. Which is, I mean, this is, this, this is the Overton window that's moving, really, isn't it? Yes. It moves to the right and the rest of the world moves with it because you, yeah, you, you mean, shift the parameters of what is and is, is, is not acceptable. And it's got the full thing. I mean, the great replacement theory, all, all of these deeply racist cultural Marxism, a very anti-Semitic yeah. invention, all of these things became common parlance, I think, on his programs. But, I, but also, I think with, he, the thing is, he could get away with it that long. That would always amaze me, whereas CNN has just sacked Don Lemon, who's yes. one of my favorite presenters, for some really awful comments Ooh. he did make. What did he do? Terrible. What did he say? Sorry, I missed that. I thought it was ratings for Don Lemon. I'm glad you're here. No, no, it's because it was in February he made a comment with his two female presenters. I watch it every morning, yes. this morning. And he said that Nikki Haley was past her prime. Oh, dear. And, well, it ties um, in they, with the last hour, in a way, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and that was um, very derogative. And then his two female presenters said, what do you actually mean about that? Yeah. He said, well, anybody that women in their 20s and 30s, but once you get into your 40s. And that was what, that, that's why they sacked him. What an idiot. He um, was an idiot, but CNN sacked him, whereas Tucker Carlson got away with this stuff. A million years. times worse. Well, then, oddly enough, then we're back to the first hour in the way that Diane Abbott is being held to a much, much higher standard than people on the right ever hold their own exactly. people. Exactly, to, but, well, look that's... at that. You've gone tri-topical with, the, with your first contribution. <laughs> um, here's the thing I don't get, and I'm going to obviously going to introduce a, a, a little bit of a boast here because it's been at least half an hour since the last one. But Fox News registers about 1.3 million weekly viewers, right? That's yeah. that's, that, that's the total. 1.3 yeah. million weekly viewers in a country of 332 million. Yeah, I get those sort of numbers on this single radio show. So how does Fox exercise so much influence? Yeah, because a lot of people watch it on, um, it's not just like, they don't tune into it. A lot of people watch it on clips, YouTube, uh, I TikTok. See. But I have I to say, to. I understand why you get such high ratings because you are absolutely my favorite host. Well, you're very kind. <laughs> you're very, could you put a word in for me? These $20 million a year contracts that they get in America and the rest of it, I could, I could probably find room for some of that. Thank you. I, 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 right. Oh, and actually, before you go, how bad did your sister-in-law's family get? Well, they, 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 did, they didn't get vaccinated. <sighs> um, they didn't get vaccinated. They didn't wear masks. They had a wedding for 200 people during the pandemic, um, which she couldn't go to. It was a family wedding. And she said, there's no way I'm, d I'm going. And I didn't blame her. And, and they're not even, they're, de they're Democrats, but I would say they're soft Democrats. Mm. They're fiscally conservative and Democrat as far as human rights. So they're really in the middle. They're the type of voter that Biden, they're, they're, they voted for Biden. And, okay. um, but yeah, they're not.
they're not, but but the other side of the family, and that was sad for me to see. And it is really you lose sight. Yeah, I mean, it's a rabbit hole, and, and you can't follow them down it. Uh, and you can't reach them once they're, once they're near, the, near the bottom of it. Thank you, Lisa. Heather is in Manchester. Heather, what can you tell us? Oh, yeah, uh, first time caller, a little bit nervous, just so you're aware. <laughs> but don't be, because you've already um, charmed me, because you, you, you're American originally, but you've got the Mancunian hire off Pat now. Uh, so that was just lovely. Uh, that was just, hiya. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, um, no, just following on from your previous caller, I had a similar experience where. Um, my kids and I moved over here and, you know, we're not necessarily massively liberal, but we're not Trumpians either. Uh, but family back in the States are gung-ho Trump to this day, and they see um, Carlson resigning as furthering the conspiracy. So really they see that more wow. as proof that the voter fraud is real, because while he's left, then clearly he knows something, and Fox is in with the Democrats. How, so eventually they'll, they'll start eating each other. The children, the revolution will start eating each other. I think I just made that up. I don't think that's a good oh, no, no, you're definitely, no, you're absolutely right, actually, because um, one of my, so my second oldest um, moved back to Texas when he was 18 because okay. the Home Office are not my friends. They mm. said, you're an adult, you must leave the UK. And, oh, um, delightful. But because of that, um, he's lived with grandparents who are as conservative, stereotypical Trumpians as you can get. Yes. And they've actually convinced him, even though he's high, high risk, he didn't get vaccinated. Oh, they don't wear masks. His grandmother passed from catching COVID and they still don't believe it. And this is this this comes from Fox, does it? This is because you're the second yes, caller in because I, I didn't I didn't pick on that. I went more for the January the sixth stuff and the lies about the election, but but anti mask vaccine skepticism. Yeah, well, that... it's, it's kind of all inclusive. No, I get that. All, I get that. Yeah. Good lord. Um, but he's since he doesn't speak to his siblings that live oh, here. Oh no, oh Heather, I'm sorry. Oh no, it's, it's but it just shows kind of the power that. The, apologies, Who's... I know you're part of the media, but the, the wider <laughs> media, shall we say? The there's American media and there's media. Come on. Yeah, well, we'll say the American media, um, the American right wing media. Well, Fox uh, News Fox. in particular, with this, with this new Newsmax coming up on the outside lane, even more extreme. Is that not just kind of the US? version of GB News? I don't know. I don't watch it enough to, to, to yeah. comment on that. It certainly doesn't have anything like the influence that Fox News has. And it's populated no. largely by clowns, I think, well, the last and, time and I checked. You know, I remember growing up, um, you didn't watch CNN because it was full of conspiracies. Fox was the only way to get the true story really? that they fact-checked. And this was decades ago. So and they, swung it, and they, they swung it around completely. And it really just direction. swung the other way. And they've got whole towns that you know, follow Fox News, and if you say a word against Fox News, then you're the devil. <laughs> and, and that is astonishing. So now the, the, the defenestration of Tucker Carlson, even after the publication of those emails that showed that he knew he was lying, knew his guest was lying. What was the name of that lawyer? Can you remember Sydney someone? Oh, gosh. I can't one of, one of Trump's head. lawyers. He, he used fairly, I mean, clear language on, on Sydney Powell. There you go. Um, the, 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 but, but now he becomes evidence of the con that he's helped us. So I don't know. It's so hard to keep up. I don't know how they do it. And as ever, as we prove on this program on a regular basis, you pull the tiniest thread on these conspiracy theories and the whole thing falls apart. And they never thank you for it. They just get angrier with you than they were before. We have some news from within our Fox family. Fox News Media and Tucker Carlson have mutually agreed to part ways. Wait, what was that? Fox News Media and Tucker Carlson have... Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene launched a new podcast. Because of this Ukraine war and Joe Biden being the little slave to Zelensky that he is, all because of Hunter Biden's little business deal in with Burisma and others, they're not the only ones, America is having to go to war with nuclear Russia. And now we know, now we know because of Jack, the 21-year-old National Guardsman that released classified documents in a little chat room for gamers, we now know the real crimes and who the real criminals are in Washington, D.C. And I want you to know, I find it really odd that Jack, the 21-year-old National Guardsman, low level, by the way, who I don't think was the only one and wasn't the one that really got those classified documents, I guarantee you that he got them from somebody. And then they want to make fun of us on, on the news and say, oh, right-wingers, oh, conservative Americans are upset over drag queens. You're damn right we're upset over drag queens. That's because they have an agenda. Distraction politics. I'd like to bring up one of the biggest pedophiles in America today. His name is Dylan Mulvaney, and I won't be referring to him as a she or her. Hello, everyone. Oh, uh, we have the president here, our real president, everyone. Hello, Mr. President. MacronShow.com, bitches. Macronshow.com. Okay. All right. I, I Sorry, guess that folks. wasn't, I guess that was, you see what they're doing? They're attacking us. They're attacking us, and this is what the, I mean, that even came up, there he was, hacking into our phones, it came up, that it, it was a legitimate number. Call. So you open up the phone lines, he was hit with a bunch of, uh, you know, prank calls, including one person claiming to be Donald Trump, and you see, like, that childlike excitement in his face when he genuinely <laughs> thinks that Trump is calling in, and then, like, just his heart getting broken in real time. Like, you see it in his face, like, oh, look at how happy he is, he's so happy, he's like, it's Donald Trump, and then, oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> you said you had already voted for the national election in Detroit? Yes. And you went to the polling location calendar for what purpose? To vote. I thought you said you had already voted in Detroit. I did. So you were going to vote twice? Yes. I don't think you're allowed to vote twice. Why wouldn't I? If the Democrats didn't do it, why can't I? Uh, because it's uh, not allowed. It's illegal. That's what we're trying to um, find what the Democrats are doing to stop them from doing that. I'm just I'm just worried because I saw what happened in Detroit and so I'm trying my best to, to help and I know that like I know some of my family members had been doing it to help Trump out because we care so much and so I just didn't know. 
I didn't know what else we could do. I love these pranks. Uh, and I, so I showed an example of it on Twitter. People were like, oh, so you're encouraging this kind of stuff. Well, we're trying to track down legitimate fraud. I see how you guys are trying to stop us from tracking down very, very legitimate fraud. I mean, we haven't tracked out a single piece of evidence yet, but there's a lot of pics that we're looking through. <laughs> <laughs> I bet there is. My favorite, and by, well, in that video, my favorite was that guy thoroughly finishing the beer he was working on. <laughs> he didn't want, I know, I know. He didn't want a drop left in that beer. Good for you, brother. Uh, so <laughs> I like the Bernie uh, placard in the back. There's a lot right with that video. We all have heard by now that the Trump administration actually does plan on completely banning TikTok from America, but I got a plan. Now, I know everybody's kind of freaking out right now because if they do for whatever reason decide to ban it, then there's not really much that we can do besides switch to other platforms. But Gen Z don't go down without a fight. So with that being said, let's go to war. All right, now step one, we did this before, but I think it's how we do it again. All right, now I need you to open up your app store and go to the official Donald Trump app. Step two, I need you to go to the section where you actually give a review. Step three, I need you to leave the worst possible review that you can think of. I remember being that happy and enthusiastic before like my soul died. Um, but you know, that was his call to action. And the whole idea behind it is, you know, if you have enough negative reviews, maybe the Apple store will take the app down. But that's unfortunately not how it works. Um, it's not going to impact Donald Trump's election app or campaign app, I should say, in that way. Uh, but if you do want to know what the reviews look like so far, uh, I did get a screen grab and uh, it does include one of the uh, Review. So right now, Trump is at 1.2 out of five stars for his app. But to be fair, he's used to low approval ratings, so it's not like you know this is something he isn't prepared for. And uh, you know, you can read that review right there, where the person says, "I'm not even part of the whole Gen Z thing trying to remove the app. I seriously got the app because I wanted to see what Donald Trump, uh, Donald Trump's plans were for the election and all that kind of stuff. But unfortunately, the app kept making my cell phone crash. <laughs> so that's actually a genuine, sincere one-star review. Um, but yeah, it's pretty funny. But I'm going to retire. The name Crooked, so that we can use the name for Joe Biden because he'll be known from now on as Crooked Joe Biden. What you just saw is such a surrender by Donald Trump. He's giving the dude Crooked because one, he couldn't come up with anything better that was new. And two, Sleepy didn't work last time around. And so none of this would be necessary if he either still had the juice or if his last strategy had remotely worked. It's just a reminder, really. Every time he calls him Crooked Joe, it's a reminder that he's not Sleepy Joe anymore because Sleepy Joe whooped Donald Trump. I wanted to address my senators, Cruz and Cornyn, who uh, neither of whom regrettably are in the room right now. But I would like for them to know that what happened to me, I think most people in this room would agree was horrific. But it's a direct result of the policies that they support. I nearly died on their watch. And furthermore, as a result of what happened to me, I may have been robbed of the opportunity to have children in the future. And this is all part of a very clear pattern from Republicans. For example, Texas Republicans just introduced a bill to ban voting centers on college campuses. Why? Because young people don't vote for Republicans. Florida Republicans introduced a bill to literally ban the Democratic Party. And here's Marjorie Taylor Greene proposing taking away the voting rights of Democrats who moved to red states. I don't think the left would ever stop. I don't think they'll ever stop trying to invade our states or our counties. So how do we stop them? Well, I think that you know red states could choose uh, in how they allow people to vote in their states. And we begin at six o'clock with new developments on Arizona's water and a Saudi-owned alfalfa farm in the far western Arizona area. Fondamante is a Saudi-owned dairy company, but there are no cows at the Arizona farms. It's all alfalfa. They grow it here and in other places around the world and ship it back to the Middle East to feed the cows there. They do that because Saudi Arabia outlawed alfalfa. It takes too much water to grow it. In a year, one of those new wells could pump more than 1.5 trillion gallons. In rural Arizona, there are no restrictions on how much groundwater can be pumped. Farms, cities, industrial business, they can all use as much groundwater as they can get. Groundwater doesn't replenish itself, at least not fast enough to come back from unlimited pumping. Reaching consensus starts with humanizing, not demonizing. Just like I have my story, I respect everyone who has a story. So she says some things that are fine, like let's not judge each other and try to find consensus and have compassion and whatever else. But this is just not moving the needle. And I'll tell you where the polling is in a moment. But just just a completely whatever the opposite of an electrifying campaign would be. That's what Nikki Haley seems to be running. She also commented about how she feels when people decide not to go through with a pregnancy. I will never forget the day she was born and then seeing her walk down the wedding. I don't know what it is about the, these speeches that Nikki Haley gives. Like the, these are nice, touching stories in some abstract sense. So your daughter being born, your daughter's wedding day, compassion, empathy. But I, I don't know if it's like how the stories are written for her, and she reads. That there's something about this that couldn't possibly be less interesting. Oh, okay. no. okay. So in terms of how this is going, uh, it's hard to imagine Nikki Haley even making it to the first primary. But I guess she's going to stick around long enough to debate. Um, if we look at recent polling here, we have an Ipsos Reuters poll where Haley is polling three percent. We have a morning consult poll where Haley is polling 3%. We have a big village poll where Haley is polling 6%. That's a B minus rated poll. So, you know, she's sort of like 3% Nikki, I guess, is where we are at this point in time. So, listen, I don't take away anything from anybody's right and ability to run and her desire, I'm sure, I guess, is genuine. And unless she's auditioning for VP, in which it's sort of like a publicity tour. But I do wonder, and I know I've said this before, and whenever I mention it, people in my audience seem to not be on the same page. I've asked before when someone like Nikki Haley talks, presumably to advisors and her family, and decides to run. Does she actually think to herself, okay, let's see, I'm polling 3%. Trump already has 
here's my path to winning. Like, does she actually think she could win or is it more of a I think I could get some positive attention if I do this, even though I know I'm not going to win. Whenever I bring this up, some people write to me and say, no, David, people become like almost like delusional and they think they could possibly win. And other people write to me and go, no, David, of course, she understands she can't win. And Chris Christie knows he can't win. And Vivek Ramaswamy knows he can't win. But they calculate that it's worth running for some other reason. I don't know the answer, but it's very difficult to imagine how Nikki Haley could look at the situation and think I can win and I can win by making quite literally the least interesting speeches in the world about abortion to the Small Business Association. It's crazy to me. Well, the agenda is kind of like Ready Player One meets Inception, where you kind of just hook up to a machine all day long and you're controlled by five companies that control your thoughts and your feelings. And the real world actually ends up being the not real world, where everyone just kind of wears goggles all day long. That's the deeper significance of the transgender movement that no one wants to talk about. So there's a direct connection to inflation and the trans issue. I say, Charlie, come on, they could be further apart. No, they're exactly the same. We don't like when the strong crush the weak. That's why we don't like Putin. That's why we don't like Leah Thomas. And this is to go a level deeper, but you guys are smart. You'll get it. The transgender movement actually matters even more than biomedical fascism. And they actually are together because the transgender movement is an introductory phase to get you to strip yourself of your humanity to mesh with machines. It's called transhumanism. They want you to say, okay, well, I can choose any gender. Why can't I just have like an exoskeleton of some sort of machine around me? This is what meta is about. The metaverse kids staring at screens all day long. This is documented. This is proven. This is where Silicon Valley is going. This is why they're so insistent on this transgender thing. Because if you stop being a man, then maybe you can stop being a human being. David. He's so coked up, dude. Like most people are only like this when they're schwitzing at like 4 a.m. after doing coke for 72 hours. You know, folks, it's always a fun time when we can talk about Devin Nunes losing yet another lawsuit. Devin Nunes has so far lost the defamation libel slander lawsuits that he's filed against the fake Devin Nunes Cow Twitter account. He lost a slander libel lawsuit that he filed against the Washington Post. And this week he lost another defamation lawsuit that he had filed against a newspaper and a reporter who ran a story many years ago that said that Devin Nunes's family owned farm was using undocumented labor. Oh my God, Rainbow Road, Rainbow Road, dude. I know, I know, this oh. uh, This is a nostalgia overload. Uh, good doggy, Mario. My diaper is so full. Uh, pee you, Mario. This is stinky. What did you just tweet? Uh, hey, what did you just tweet? Oh my God, uh, look at his hat. Uh, uh, they captured thank you. perfectly. Uh, yep. This yeah. was hitting me right in the childhood. <laughs> yeah, okay, yes, it's a me, wahoo. And just, just watch the movie, all right? Just focus on, remember that? You remember seeing that in the games? <laughs> yeah, I just think the pacing feels a bit off for me, you know? What did you just say? I said the pacing feels a bit off. I just, yeah. Feels a bit rushed is all. You know, it's a clean, I don't know. Oh, oh my god! The, the mushroom! The, the mushroom! Here's the mushroom! I haven't been happy since I was seven years old. I mean, it's a Mario movie. You're in a children's movie, you ape. I mean, do you just go into children's movies and bitch and complain the whole time? I, uh, what are you gonna do, break down Paw Patrol next? Everyone in here uh, is in their 30s. Oh. I'm actually 42. Oh, you piece of shit. I mean, everyone in here is in their 30s. I mean, look around, it's true. Not everybody's, you know I mean? it is. Not everybody's 30. Listen, retard! Oh. Oh. No, I, oh, that's I didn't in poor taste. Mario, Mario just used just, my just, I didn't mean to say, I didn't mean to say it. Someone just dropped me back in my childhood. Just li listen, you're gonna gobble this movie up. You're gonna say that it was everything you wanted out of a Mario film, okay? Because it is. I am a low stakes movie meant to get you to buy more product, and that's what you're gonna do. I know, I certainly am. Shut up! Ooh. <laughs> okay, buddy, you have zero life left. <laughs> I, I just wanted a nice night out with my son, all right? I'm just glad he likes it. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Whatever. Mario. Mario, my diaper is so stinky. Okay, Luigi, let's go visit the Donkey Kong. <laughs> all right, here we go. Now be sure to get a new diaper on, because you have to take a big stick. Hey, hey what's Typing. Oh my God, a Koopa! Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, USA Today just put out a piece that has a really good overview or recap of the cases and investigations pending against Donald Trump. Here is the headline. How many cases does Donald Trump face? Two DOJ investigations, a Georgia grand jury, New York charges, and a lawsuit. And that article begins, former Vice President Mike Pence's testimony before a federal grand jury is only one of the high profile developments in the investigations of former President Donald Trump this week. Pence, as president of the Senate, was key to Trump's strategy to overturn the results of the 2020 election. He testified Thursday before a grand jury in Justice Department Special Counsel Jack Smith's investigation of Trump's role in the Capitol attack on January 6, 2021. Trump's other legal challenges include Smith is also investigating hundreds of classified documents seized at Trump's Florida estate of Mar-a-Lago. E. Jean Carroll's civil lawsuit in federal court in New York began Tuesday. She accused Trump of defamation for denying her allegation he raped her, attacking her integrity. Also in New York, on Monday, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg sought to limit Trump's access to evidence before his trial on the 34 counts of allegedly falsifying business records, 34 felony counts for those of you scoring at home. In Georgia, on Monday, Fulton County District Attorney Fawny Willis warned local law enforcement authorities a grand jury could return its decisions on whether to charge anyone in her investigation of election fraud between July 11th and September 1st. So friends, how did we end up here? Donald Trump is failing. 
The Republican Party is failing as a result of its insane refusal to walk away from Donald Trump. In volume two of the Mueller report, Bob Mueller fully and meticulously documented as many as 10 felony obstruction of justice crimes committed by Donald Trump. So it really wasn't for a lack of evidence that Donald Trump committed federal felony offenses. No, it had everything to do with a Republican Party that abdicated its oath of office, its allegiance to the rule of law. Friends, I firmly believe, I believe to my core that Bob Mueller thought when he delivered all of that evidence of the many felony crimes committed by Donald Trump, there wouldn't be a politician in the world who would decline to demand Donald Trump's resignation. So I maintain it wasn't because of Bob Mueller. It wasn't even because of Donald Trump that we are where we are today. It is a result of the death of honor and integrity of the Republican Party. That's why we are in this pickle. The Republicans who control Florida State Senate this week did exactly what they swore just two weeks ago they were totally not gonna do. And that is, of course, repeal the resign to run law that would require our governor, Ron DeSantis, to resign as governor if he wants to run for president. Now, two weeks ago, it was reported that Republicans were going to take up a, uh, you know, amendment to the resign to run law during this little session they've got right now where they're supposed to be focused on voter fraud. And you had the Republican leader of the Senate come out and tell the press this is preposterous. We're not going to touch the resign to run law. This is stupid. This is the media making stuff up. We're only here to crack down on voter fraud. So shut up with your stupid stuff. Then on Tuesday of this week, as they're voting on a crackdown on voter fraud mess, uh, 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 piece of legislation, they snuck in an amendment that alters the resign to run law and creates the little caveat that says, you don't have to resign if you're actually running for president, though. If it was a different office, like, yeah, you'd have to resign. But if you're running for president, you don't have to resign. 